It sounds almost too crazy to be true, but two probes that were hastily cobbled together with little money to last only five years in space have now been flying through space for more than 45 years. And now Voyager 1 has sent warning data back to Earth. This may be the first contact with a previously unknown intelligence flowing through interstellar space. Scientists were astonished when, after more than 40 years of faithful work, confusing data was sent back to Earth by their veteran Voyager 1. What did these mean? Was Voyager off course, or was the probe about to go off course? No, some claim. Voyager merely sent us a message from an alien force that no one had expected. Others, however, do not want to believe that something is at home in interstellar space that could cause us problems. They claim that the data was due to a technical defect. Who is right now, and why should the data be a warning? Human arrogance is sometimes overwhelming. Small and insignificant, we sit on Earth and think we know everything about the vastness of the cosmos, just because we can illuminate a part of space with our tiny telescopes. Our computers calculate from data of the observations what is probably going on out there, physically and chemically. We reconstruct it from stories about star formation, the movements of bodies in space, and the beginning of the universe, and call it science. Then, a probe finally flies to where no man or technical device has ever been, and our probe sends data that may indicate something very big, and scientists wave it off. They don't want to know about a new force of nature that may have its own intelligence and be at home in the vast dark spaces of the cosmos. Voyager 1 and 2 are two of the most successful scientific space exploration vehicles ever created. Both probes have traveled incredibly far, seeing, photographing, measuring, and being the very first man-made objects to explore the far edges of the solar system. In 2012, the time had come. More than 30 years after its launch, Voyager 1 became the first to cross a magical threshold, the space where our sun's sphere of influence ends and the mysterious interstellar medium begins. The infinite darkness of space, the emptiness and silence that makes up 95% of the known cosmos, was touched for the first time by a human spacecraft. Who would have thought that Voyager 1 and 2 would experience this historic moment? What is beyond the heliosphere? Were you aware that the space around Earth and all our neighboring planets is something very different from the gigantic empty space between stars? We always say a rocket flies into space, or we think outside the Earth's orbit begins the same space we see when Hubble and James Webb show pictures of the deep and dark black cosmos. But this is not true. All space from the Sun so far beyond the Kuiper Belt is affected by solar radiation and the magnetic forces of our star. Only many billions of kilometers away from the Sun, the real space, the void, the interstellar medium, begins. When exactly Voyager will finally reach this space was unclear for a long time. Researchers had expectations, but no facts, until Voyager provided them. It was suspected that the particle density would decrease sharply at some point. Where previously there were about 100 particles per cubic centimeter, there would then only be a few. At first, the measurement data of the probe surprised, since they indicated an increased magnetic force, which apparently still came far outside from the Sun and increased shortly before the crossing. Researchers concluded that there is a kind of stagnation of the solar force where it meets the interstellar medium. If both currents collide, the solar radiation forms something like a thick buffer. The researchers had not expected this. In 2015, the measurement data changed so significantly that interstellar space became more tangible. Everything went reasonably as predicted. Voyager 1 continued to function normally until mission scientists recently noticed that the probe suddenly seemed to have confused them about its position in space. NASA initially reassured that such an incident was to be expected at this stage of the Voyager mission. Suzanne Dode, project manager for Voyager 1 and its twin sister Voyager 2 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, said the problem was most likely with the spacecraft's Altitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, antenna alignment mechanism. But the AACS appears to be functional, as the spacecraft was receiving commands and sending science data back to Earth with the same signal strength as before. However, the telemetry data from the AACS was unassignable, 
even though the antenna had been properly pointed at all times. Otherwise, not a single signal would have reached us. According to NASA, staff took care to investigate the problem and fix it. But by then, some scientists had already begun to prick up their ears. They stumbled over the fact that Voyager 1 continued to send this supposedly meaningless data safely to Earth, and no alarm had triggered in the process, nor did the probe switch to safety mode. This may mean that the data was correct and that NASA simply could not interpret it correctly. Possibly, Voyager 1 encountered a structure in the interstellar space within which the normal data to space and time were no longer correct. On Earth, it looked as if the probe had not detected its position correctly, but in reality, we could be on the track of something unusual. An alien force or an alien signal? A short time after the strange confusion about its position in space, Voyager 1 caught something else that worried scientists. The particle detector showed a faint plasma current where there should be nothing. Like a line, the current stretched through the supposed void and scientists were once again worried. Explanations were quickly found and officially, it was said that a small amount of superthermal electrons, which are generally present in plasmas, had produced a small plasma frequency peak on one of Voyager's short antennas. Most likely, it had been a small number of fast electrons. But again, other scientists did not agree. For them, all these strange measurement data speak one language, pointing to something mysterious. Plasma waves there where actually nothing should be, a loss of the space orientation, although Voyager actually functioned completely normally. All this speaks also for the fact that in the interstellar medium, a force prevails, which we do not know of so far. So researchers even dared to claim that this could be a new force of nature. They warned their colleagues not to take these measurement data lightly and to always want to explain everything immediately with what is known. If we really want to investigate the space between the stars, we must also be able to face new and previously unknown things. But neither NASA nor more conservative scientific circles want to know anything about this. Imagine you come to a new country. Before you have imagined how it would be there, perhaps you read a picture book or travel guide. Then many things are completely different there and instead of surrendering to this adventure, you leaf through your books and compare the real events with your expectations. This is exactly what most researchers are doing right now with the exciting new discoveries of Voyager 1 and we may be missing out on important discoveries this way. Is NASA making a mistake? Instead of acting on new ideas, NASA released a new report on the fate of Voyager 1. Officials describe in detail how a dedicated team spent days digging through the probe's blueprints. Engineers had to sift through decades-old manuals to find a solution to the alleged problem. Some data was probably even taken home by long-retired engineers. Since both probes were only supposed to fly for five years, no one had thought that the data would become important again 40 years later. According to NASA, the Voyager team not only figured out the problem, but solved it. The statement goes on to say that we received tangled data before the spacecraft's Altitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, sent back information via an onboard computer that has been out of service for years. The data was deemed corrupted before it was even transmitted by the computer. Susan Dode's team instructed the AACS to resend its data through the spacecraft's working computer. After that, everything was back to normal. How long will we be able to accompany Voyager 1 and 2? The power generated by the two spacecraft is steadily declining, and mission team members have been turning off some components for years to conserve power. They hope the probes will remain in service until at least 2025. Voyager 1 is currently about 23.3 billion kilometers from Earth, or 156 times the Sun-Earth distance. The probes are tracked using NASA's Deep Space Network, which sends only 160 bits per second of data back to Earth. A typical home broadband connection is measured in megabytes per second, or millions of bits per second. Still, these transmission rates are enough to capture the measured data of the properties of the interstellar medium. After all, there must not be much there. Although Voyager 1 has soon flown 10 years beyond the heliosphere, it has not yet completely left the solar system. Far out in space is another mystery of the nearby cosmos, the Oort Cloud. This spherical disk of comets and asteroids is more than 2,000 Sun-Earth distances from the Sun. 
Although it lies far away from the actual plasma sphere of the Sun, the Oort cloud still belongs to our solar system. It's bound to our Sun by a mechanism that is not yet fully understood. It's probably the dent in gravity left by the solar system in space-time that binds this collection of asteroids and comets to us. Just imagine, Voyager 1 will need another 300 years or so to fly to this cloud. Only too gladly the scientists would have today already data of this distant place. But they cannot wait 300 years, nor will the power supply of the probes last long enough to send data to Earth. But who knows, maybe by then humans will have spacecraft that can catch up with Voyager and jet off to the Oort cloud to take measurements on the spot. If we make the leap into space and master the construction of faster-than-light drives, Voyager 1 might someday be something of a curious cosmic attraction from long ago. Subscribe to the channel right now because new exciting videos are coming all the time.